Hi, I'm Katie. I'm a midwife and lactation consultant. And in this breastfeeding series, I'll be answering the most frequently asked questions around breastfeeding in the first hours, days and weeks. Most babies find and attach onto the breast by themselves within the first few minutes or hour after birth. But for some babies, this doesn't always happen. This may be due to the gestational age of your baby. For example, born before 38 weeks, the type of birth that you have both had, or the medications used during the labor. All of which may make your baby quite sleepy for the first few hours or days in some cases. Of course, they eventually want to wake up and feed and feed and feed, but it might take a day or two for breastfeeding to get going. So why am I talking about this? And why is it important? During the first hours and days, babies are designed to latch onto your breast and suck frequently not only for them to get your colostrum, but this also switches on the milk-making cells in your breast. Each time your baby feeds, it rapidly increases the hormone prolactin, circulating in your blood and signals to the milk-making cells to start building a good milk supply for now and in the future. In the early days, you are laying down the foundations to enable you to keep making a good milk supply for your baby. So breastfeeding early, frequently, and effectively is vital to ensure all mums have a good opportunity to make sufficient milk. But what happens if your baby is unable to breastfeed frequently in these early hours and days? We have seen from the research that if babies do not feed frequently and effectively in this critical time point, their mothers are less likely to make enough breast milk to be able to exclusively breastfeed their baby. This is why it's really important for anyone whose baby is not yet able to breastfeed well in the first few days to start stimulating the milk making cells through other techniques. If we miss this critical window of the first few hours and days, it can be very difficult for some mums to ever make a full milk supply. So how do we stimulate and switch on the milk making cells if our babies can't yet breastfeed? Here are the top tips to help support your baby and your milk supply in the first few hours if breastfeeding doesn't quite go as planned. Tip number one, skin to skin contact. This is essential in combination with the other tips I will give you today. Skin to skin contact is not only lovely to have with your baby, it does some very special jobs as well. Holding your baby in skin to skin contact helps release the hormone oxytocin, known as the love hormone. This hormone helps to reduce stress levels in both mums and babies. Oxytocin helps to contract your uterus and helps reduce your bleeding after birth. It's the main hormone which pushes the milk down through your milk ducts. I like to think of oxytocin as the waitress. She delivers the milk to your baby. Skin to skin contact offers your baby the opportunity to breastfeed more frequently or to start breastfeeding. Holding them close to your breasts allows your baby to smell your milk and utilize their natural instincts to find the breast and feed. Holding them in skin to skin contact means that mums learn their baby's feeding cues much sooner and that helps with keeping babies calm around the breast when it's time for a feed. And we know from the research that babies who are held frequently in skin to skin contact cry less than babies who are not. Tip number two, the first three hours after birth are really important. It's important to start early to get your milk supply on track as we already said. 
In order to do this, your breasts need to be stimulated frequently. Normally, this would occur by your baby feeding around eight to 12 times in 24 hours. But if your baby is not yet breastfeeding frequently or at all, it's important to activate the milk making cells by expressing. You need to express the same number of times as a baby would naturally feed. So this means pumping your breasts eight or more times in 24 hours if they are unable to breastfeed. And if your baby is only doing some breastfeeds, but not yet meeting the minimum of eight feeds in 24 hours, you would need to make up the rest of the missing feeds by pumping. You will need to keep pumping until your baby is breastfeeding well. This may be within a few hours, or it could be several days, depending on the reason why your baby is unable to breastfeed at this stage. Once your baby is breastfeeding well, you should no longer need to be expressing and ex instead just breastfeed. Enjoy your baby and listen to their feeding cues. They will likely show signs of wanting to feed between eight to 12 times every 24 hours. That's quite a lot, but very normal. So tip number three, how to express. Be the baby, do everything they would. Massage your breasts and nipples with your hands gently before expressing. Express frequently using a breast pump. Hand express for a few minutes after pumping. And remember, it's very normal to see very small amounts of colostrum in the first day or two. The milk volume will rapidly increase once your milk comes in. And be sure to collect all your wonderful colostrum to feed to your baby. Over the next few days and weeks, you and your baby are gaining confidence together to get breastfeeding on track. Never be frightened to reach out for more support. And please never feel like you're the only person out there who is finding some aspects of breastfeeding difficult at the beginning. Like anything new, sometimes it just takes time to learn and to feel more relaxed with it in the beginning. Check out our other videos for more support and help in the first few days and weeks of your breastfeeding and lactation journey.